Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing East Shade. East Shade is a first person RPG slash painting simulator created by East Shade Studios and it's just been released for the PlayStation 4. So what is the game all about? Well, in East Shade you play a traveling painter and you get shipwrecked on an island, the island of East Shade. As you explore the island you meet lots of colourful characters and then create paintings for them. In return they will buy them from you or they will teach you how to build things like tents or campfires. They will give you schematics and they all help you on your journey. You can also paint just for fun for yourself but also in commemoration of your mother which is a kind of an emotive overtone of the story. So as I said, you play an artist who is shipwrecked on a beautiful island. You don't know much about the main character other than they're an artist. It's, it's more about the other characters on the island and how you uncover their stories and the story of the island a as a whole. In order to progress in the game, you need money, you need canvases to paint on, you need equipment and you need to know how to build certain things and the only way to get those is to paint and learn from the locals. The more things you obtain the deeper into the island you can explore and the more secrets you can uncover. Exploration is the key in this game because you can't just paint non-stop you have an inspiration meter that goes up every time you find a new place so every new interaction, every new story path that you complete, every new type of fetch quest it will give you a little bit of um, juice in that meter that means you can then do a painting or two paintings or three. The game world is really nicely created, it's very vibrant and colourful and it's quite vast. It feels very um, medieval and northern European stylistically Think Lord of the Rings, Skyrim, The Witcher and The Hobbit in terms of how the style of the environments feel. You know, some of it feel, felt like you were in like Hobbiton in The Lord of the Rings with the little round doors. In terms of gameplay, it feels like a classic RPG like the Elder Scrolls series, minus all of combat and jeopardy of dying. The only way in this game you can really be killed or injured is going out at night in the cold without a coat. That's literally the only way you can kind of have your progress sort of ended. But even then you don't really die. So it feels like an RPG but it's more chilled out because there's no combat and the emphasis is on painting and art and travelling around, exploration, meeting strangers, making friends and just capturing those special moments with your easel and paintbrush on the journey. Which moves me on to the actual painting mechanics in this game. It honestly feels more like a glorified photo mode because you don't really paint anything per se. You just move a translucent border around the screen until you find the scene you want to paint. Then you press X and it just replicates that image on a canvas with a sort of Photoshop filter effect to create a kind of a paint style. It does look nice when you see it on the canvas and on people's walls in the game but it would have been nice to have been able to actually paint in more detail because it's very very basic in its current state you know like an actual artist in real life would probably scoff at this and just because it's it really kind of undermines the work an artist can do because paintings can take weeks and months to actually process in this it's it's a game more aimed at I'd say like the kind of a enthusiast painter rather than the actual painter the story develops at quite a slow pace, you know, you start out doing a few commissioned paintings for the locals, then as you unlock more parts of the island you have more tasks to achieve. There is a point where you start to work for an art gallery which is very interesting, but that also turns the painting aspect more into work than art. I found once I worked for the gallery I was just including what they wanted in the frame rather than really do it in an artistic way. Just, you know, if you got everything in the frame they asked for, they were happy. It didn't really matter whether it was good or not. So the working for the gallery was interesting, but it kind of almost lost some of the magic as well. The overall feel of the game is a very charming, relaxing, safe environment where you can just play at your leisure and explore as a traveling artist would. Instead of crafting arrows and armor, you're crafting canvases, you're making cups of herbal tea, you're setting up a campfire, you're putting up tents in the forest and even fishing at some points. So it's very countrified, very rural, very much like the simple life in the wild. 
I don't think I've played a game like this before where you're an artist so it's, it's not about saving the world, it's not about being the hero. It's just about expressing yourself and creating art for you, for your mother's memory and for the people who commission you on the island. It's definitely something original and, and in that respect I have to admire the developers for that. The graphics on the whole are nice without being amazing. It's an indie game so you have to lower your expectations a touch in that regard. The environments are very colourful and they feel very good on the attention to the small details, really kind of um, feel like a lived in place. The graphics however do have issues. There is a lot of pop up, pop in of the environments as you explore. It's not a massive problem, but for a game that's all about immersion over action, having these issues does kind of take you out of the experience from time to time. I also encountered quite a few blue screen crashes during play. I think due to the graphics popping in and out or not loading quick enough, it just seems sometimes the game's visuals aren't optimised correctly and then it just crashes. The music is absolutely beautiful, the instruments used really fit with the game world, lots of stringed instruments, harps and the like. The voice acting is actually pretty good, it's very British centric, lots of regional accents, countryside accents, it feels like you're in a quaint village full of quirky characters with interesting voices. The ambient sounds and sound effects are all very nice and sit well with everything stylistically in the game. Okay, so what's good and what's bad? What's good? It's a very charming game. The audio is excellent. It's enjoyable traveling around, meeting all the weird and wonderful characters, and to be able to paint and see your paintings on people's walls after they've bought them, that's a very nice sense of achievement. What's bad? The painting mechanics are very basic and it would have been nice to see more control or more depth added to that feature. The graphics are quite glitchy and have a lot of pop-up. I experienced a lot of crashes during play which was annoying. The game was ported from PC and you can tell because some buttons don't correlate to the PS4. Basically they use Xbox buttons on the screen so you can tell they haven't put the full attention to detail into the port. The fast travel doesn't work which again is annoying so you try and fast travel and it just takes you back to where you started so that, that needs to be addressed. So what do I think? I think initially it's a very enjoyable experience. It's the first few hours where this game is really enchanting and the game world and the characters are really delightful and it makes you want to explore and see every part of the island. Painting is fun at first but after a while it does become a bit of a sideshow and the game becomes more about fetch quests than actually creating art which is a shame. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, it's got some really nice touches such as seeing your paintings being hung up in houses such as learning blueprints from the locals to create items that help you on your way but also the glitches do affect your overall enjoyment. I'm sure they'll patch them but as I was playing I noticed more and more little things that suggest this is a lazy port of a PC game. It's not something that's been properly product tested, it feels like it's just been rushed out without really due care put into the detail. But despite those negatives, I still enjoyed the game on the whole. So who should buy this game? If you're looking for a leisurely stroll of a game, a game that won't stress you out, a game that will let you express yourself, then this will be for you. Also, if you like RPGs but aren't keen on the combat, this is almost perfect for you. However, if you like a bit more action in your games, then this won't float your boat. It's very slow, it's very thoughtful, it's a game that's meant to be played over a period of time and not rushed, so if you're looking for a quick fix then look elsewhere I'd say. So what is the verdict? Well, I enjoyed it at the start, then around the middle I started to become a little fatigued with it all. The fetch quests, the bugs etc, those things just brought it down a touch. But in the end, after completing it and looking back at it, as a whole, I definitely am glad I played it. Despite its flaws, it's still an admirable piece of work and something that is truly different to everything else out there at the moment. So my score for East Shade is 7 out of 10. If they fix the bugs, the crashes, the lazy port issues, then this would be more like an 8 out of 10. But for now, as it stands on release, 
in its current state East Shade is 7 out of 10. It's a good game but it could be improved with a bit more due care and it's, it's worth having a look if you're into something a little bit more leisurely and creative. Okay, that was the East Shade review. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. This is Photography Gamer, signing off. Thank you.